is Project K and the A, and I just actually had an opportunity to interview my cousin, Andre, uh, Chef, Chef Joe or Chef Andre, and we talked a little bit about legacy while he put some um, salmon on a grill, some steaks on a grill, seasoned it, and, in and I interjected a couple of questions about what he wanted to be known for and what is he currently known for right now. So one of the things that he talked about is our granddad. Our granddad, actually, this is our, our granddad here who actually passed on Friday, July the 29th, and we just had his service on yesterday. So um, what he's talking about is the legacy of our grandfather and what he instilled in him and what his, our grandfather's father instilled in him. So stay tuned for that. And again, that is uh, Legacy with Project K and Chef Andre or Chef Joe. Thanks for watching. Okay, this is Project K and the A, and I'm actually here with my cousin Andre, who is a chef. Okay, Chef Andre, could you please tell me about the meal that you're preparing? Oh my God, really? Could you I'm so serious. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't this a beautiful piece of meat right here? Of course, this is salmon. What did you do? Uh, Let's talk about your seasonings. A little bit of garlic salt, some applewood rub, cool. um, crushed red pepper flakes, uh, black pepper, some honey, and of course the world famous Worcestershire. Ah, okay, so you layered all of the um, the seasonings on top. Correct. One of the things I just saw you do, which I thought was very different, was that you uh, took the honey, and it's the wildflower honey, which is a local honey here in Georgia, and you drizzled it across the actual salmon. Now, when you put it on the grill, because he is going to prepare it by grill, you're going to, are you going to seal it, or are you just going to put it directly on the, on the heat? Directly on the heat. Okay. The heat source, because with the honey, the sugar, or the sweetness from the honey is actually going to give it a nice bark. Okay. And what bark is, is that, it's just, you know, like a lot of people like the crispiness when they put stuff on the grill, or anything like that, so what the bark is going to do is going to give it a nice color on the salmon. It's going to actually look really, really, really nice. It's beautiful. It is definitely beautiful. Okay, and how long will it take to actually uh, so for salmon it doesn't take that long okay it's a fish so how many pounds of uh, salmon is this you know? four pound salmon okay um, well salmon it doesn't take that long to, to cook so you're talking about a good nice 20 minutes just depending on how hot your heat is wonderful um right now because i'm hungry so i got high heat so right now it's probably going to take about 20 25 minutes to cook this computer. Um, uh, but it just depends on how long. A lot of people like to smoke salmon. If you smoke it, then you want um, what we call long and low. So you have long time, low heat. Okay. Well, since we're in a rush, we gotta we gotta cook this thing real quick. Yeah. So high heat, short time. High heat, <laughs> short time. Awesome. Long and low, which is low heat, long time. So okay. It just depends on how, how quickly you want to get it get it done. Yeah. My heat's almost. It might be a little bit long, so it might take a little bit longer to cook, but that's fine. I mean, I got some other meats that I have to prepare, but this is probably one of the better, better meats I like to, like to cook with. Awesome. Just, just same, so. Yeah, and, then, and and so while it's sitting actually here, this is almost like a marinade. Yep. And so it's just sitting here for probably, how long are you going to let it sit? Like 10, About 10, 15 minutes, let the seasonings actually get seeped down into the meat. You know, Give it, it, it's, it's mostly going to just be on top. I mean, okay. It, 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 it really doesn't go too far into the meat. Okay. I mean, it just depends on. I mean, it depends on the, what's going on with the salmon when they were when, they, when the, whoever filleted. Okay. If they filleted it correctly. Sometimes you or it actually go in when you debone it. Mm. So a lot of the flavors auto, automatically go in. So it just depends on how whatever happened to this piece of fish before it goes into my belly. So. Yeah. So we're back with Chef Andre, and he has several steaks here that he's also going to put on the grill. And so, are these lean cuts? Mm, they're like sirloin cuts. Okay. So, you can say they're pretty lean. They're not, it's not as fatty as a, like a ribeye would be, or a, yeah, mostly ribeyes are really fatty, so. Okay, and so there's no bone, and uh, they look amazing. So we're starting out with them, some garlic salt. Garlic salt. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, we're going to also use some applewood uh, apple rub, you okay. know, to give it a little bit of the flavor, smokiness, like the flavor, black pepper, and that's basically it. You want to keep, with steaks, you want to keep it as simple as possible. Okay. You don't want to just keep adding stuff to it because then you take away the quality of the meat. What uh, is that, Daddy? What's so, sort of applewood? Flavor, so. Apple Do you put that on all your steaks? Sometimes. It's good stuff. Have I tasted that before? Yeah, here, I'll taste it. Moisturizer without clogging for healthy, hydrated skin every day. Tastes like barbecue. Mm hmm. Oh, tastes like barbecue. Yeah. Ooh. He's got a. He has his father's palate, I'm sure. <laughs> but Taja, he probably has your palate as well. <laughs> Okay. Daddy, All right. Uh, most people, th that tastes like barbecue, Daddy. A lot of times you can just use just basic salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, it's fine. This is family <laughs> hour. Just do basic salt and pepper a lot of times. Um, okay. Just throw it on the grill. Good, good temperature to cook it at. Is it, uh, what temperature? Do you get medium or uh, me personally, I like mid rare. Okay. Um, okay, mid rare. Okay. I mean, you don't want to overcook your meats. A lot of people, I understand a lot of it well done people like that. Mhm. Mm but you know, when you cook your steak well done, you just really just cook all the flavor out of the steak. So that's why you, a lot of people have to use a lot of seasonings on their steaks. Okay. It's because they they like them well done, so that you don't have any flavor on the inside of the I meat. I bring that that on it. Uh, okay. Yeah, maybe. I'll think about that. I have to think about that. So. Cool. What's the honey for? That was for the salmon. So you know, you don't. Did you really... already make the salmon? No. You don't really want to overdo it. It's know. just seasoned already. Yeah. Okay, so that's a, the last little top is the uh, Worcestershire yeah, sauce. That's all you need. Leather is. But yeah, you don't. Um, but yeah, that's why a lot of people with, um, with well done steaks, that's why they have to put more, add more salt, add more pepper, add more seasonings to it because they've cooked all the flavor out of the meat. Okay. Um, not saying there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that, you know. That's, that's not what, your preference. Yeah, that's why you get people with high cholesterol or high cholesterol or not cholesterol, but what is that called? Sodium? Uh -huh, right. So. A hypertension. Yeah. Okay. Hypertension because they have to add more salt. Salt to it to get the flavor. Right. Okay, so how long will these actually uh, sit and marinate? And about the same. About same. 15, 20 okay. minutes. Because right now I'm getting ready to throw the salmon on. Okay. Why are you getting ready to do it? Okay. All right. It should be probably at about a good 400 degrees. Okay. Right now. And the steaks will cook at the same temperature as well? Same temperature okay. As well. Okay, but it'll just be medium, uh, mid mid rare, you said. Well, uh, no. Oh. I mean, <laughs> okay. <laughs> it just depends. I mean, there's nothing wrong with a little bit of rare. Okay. Gotcha. I used to like well done, but then I started eating. A little bit more steaks at the yeah, mid rare and medium stage, and it's actually really good. You get a lot more flavor. Okay. Awesome, awesome, awesome spot. Okay, so we're heading outside to put this on the grill. You also added some parsley flakes. Is that for color? Or Yeah, just for color. And it's so beautiful. Just for presentation. Yes, presentation. Okay, so this, the, the grill has the temp. What is it? It's at right at 350. It's at 350? Which is a good temperature. Okay. I mean, it's, not too, it's not too hot. It's not too cold. It's actually perfect. Okay. Once you actually start throwing your meat uh, and everything so on there. Fresh, fresh mm -hmm. little watermelon. It'll actually be perfect. For okay. So, are the... There's no, uh, like, flavoring on the... No. Okay. Uh, maybe a mesquite. Maybe. A mesquite. Okay, mesquite. Okay. It's mesquite. It's a mesquite charcoal. Just take your salmon. Ooh, look at that beautiful salmon, y'all. Isn't that beautiful? It is. It does have skin on as well. It has skin on the bottom. Ooh, listen to the sizzle. It's pretty. It's, it's pretty right here. Isn't it beautiful? That's Alaskan salmon. Four pounds. Beautiful. Don't be afraid to get in there. Just 
use your fingers. Just get in there and just make sure you put all your sauce back on there. Oh, that sounds, it smells amazing. Wow. Exciting, cannot wait. Granddad. Yeah. They're trying to get, I, I used to get as much information. I was like a spud. Mm -hmm. Try to get as much information I can. So I would say to continue my grandfather's legacy. To pass it on to my children. Okay. So they can pass it on to their children. And their children and their children and so forth. So that's basically... Um, you know, my grandfather always say, you know, you gotta work hard to get what you want, or in order to get what you need, or you gotta work hard in order to provide for your family. Well, you know, I always wondered what that meant, you know, until I started having my own family. You know, you do whatever it takes to provide for your family, you know, whether you're tired, sleepy, like you got a claw every day, and that's what one thing I noticed about him. And, I, and now I understand what he meant by, you know, you got to work hard every day to get what you want in life. I already got what I want in life, which is my family. You know, and the working hard part—that's the—that's the easy part, you know. Yeah. But you know, and by just watching my grandfather, I I understand. You know, you know, the working hard part, yeah, that's the easy part, but you know, you gotta make sure that there's food on the table, make sure that the bills are paid, make sure there's a roof over the head and clothes on the back, you know, and that's, that's why I always gotta do what I gotta do, you know, I can work two, three jobs, just like my grandfather did, you know, just to make sure it happens, and, and my kids see that, daddy's gotta go to work, why daddy, hey, son, daughter, you guys like to eat, you guys like the clothes on your back, you guys like the food on the table. Yes, Daddy. And that's why Daddy's got to go to work. So you can continue to get that. And that's what my grandfather used to do. And I saw that on the, whenever, you know, I, I seen him or I was around him. And he would do whatever it takes. And then, of course, you know, I have co-workers that come to me and say, you know, because just like my grandfather, he had friends and co-workers that came to him and asked him for advice. Same thing happens to me, mm -hmm. you know. So I, I kind of see that I've become my grandfather yeah. as a man, you know. That's awesome. So, but as far as my legacy, you know, I, I, it's not my legacy. It was my grandfather's and his father's before him, and his father's before him, and his father's, and so forth. So. I'm just continuing the tradition and trying to pass it on to my kids or to them and hopefully they understand that, you know, that there's a legacy to fulfill and you got to keep that, you know. That's my son, That's my little buddy. Yep. <laughs> All right, we're going on the grill? Going to the grill.
Yes, it is almost there. If not there, what say ye, Chef? How much longer? A hot spot. Okay, for the steak. So you you think you might have to move the salmon salmon before you? Okay. That's my hot spot. Okay. Good. Let it come on out. So we're gonna put it at, you can put it in a pan? Oh, oh, top, okay. Do you want me to get like one side or try to or something? Yeah, that's, I've got a couple of these on a stick. Okay. So you're gonna have to, uh. Some, some of these might come out well done. Okay. Let's, Did anybody get ice? No. Uh-uh. No. I do. Uh, not in my hand, though. I do. <laughs> I want some of the crispy part. Yeah, that was so you get the grill marks by turning them. Oh, I never knew that. So the salmon has been transferred into a pan and it's going to continue to cook there. Okay. Okay, cool. All right, so now we got, I know about markings and seasonings. So I feel pretty empowered. The only thing I don't know how to do is start the fire. That's so mm. sad. <laughs>